right, good morning, everybody. Come on, aren't you glad to be at church today? Man, I'm glad you're here. Y'all look incredible. Uh, you don't look tired at all. Nobody. Hey, uh, we're, we're in the very first, Matt said it, you're batting 1,000 for church attendance. Don't that feel good, huh? It feels good. You, you know, most of us will get there. Um, and, and, you know, we'll, we'll figure that out in the next couple of weeks. But uh, we're kicking off a, a series next week for the new year, and I'd love for you to be a part of it. Today's kind of like a standalone day. Another thing that we're doing next week as a church, corporately, we do this every year, is we're entering into a season of prayer and fasting. Uh, I love this season. I, I, I'm, I'm a guy that loves the new year. Anybody, like, anybody love the new year, like New Year's? Any New Year's Day fans? Like, nobody. <laughs> Some of you are like, no. I love it because it does. It, there's just something psychologically that happens. It's a new beginning. I love new beginnings. I love restoration stories. I love do-overs. Anybody else love a do-over? Uh, I'm the, like, we're like the first generation. My generation is like the first generation that kind of got to grow up with video games. I love video games. We got any video game fans here? Um, here's one of the things that I learned as a child with video games is um, I'm not good at losing. <laughs> so if any video game that I've ever played, I've not been beaten much ever by a video game because anytime they get ahead, I just push that reset button. You know what I mean? <laughs> Football, man, they're bringing back college football this year for video games. That's going to be awesome. Uh, I've never been beaten in the history of college football and video games. And then they get 20 points ahead, start over, jerks. <laughs> I'm, just getting, I'm not getting beat, right? Uh, my wife will tell you because I, I, it's, I'm working on it, okay? This is my, I'm, I'm getting better. I'm 38. I've gotten incrementally better over the years. But if I'm losing at something, we're just going to play until I win. I'm convinced that there's probably been hundreds of times where she has just allowed me to win at something because she's just sick of going at you. She's just sick of trying, you know, sick, sick of beating me. Uh, but it's, it's a new year, and we get to start fresh. And I know if you're, um, I know it's really good to go, well, it's not a new year. It's just the calendar's changed. And, but the truth is, if you, if you let it, if you allow it to be, it can be a fresh start. It can be a fresh start. Can I tell you some good news? Even with that? Is when you when you really when at, when this fresh start is screwed up Thursday, <laughs> Friday can be a fresh start. Saturday can be, and the Bible tells us His mercies are new. Guess what? Every morning. Come on, anybody in here glad for second chances and third chances? And I'm just so thankful for a God that loves us enough to be there in spite of us. And so today, we're going to kick off, I want to talk to you, if you got your notes, go ahead and pull them out. We're kicking off a, series, a, a message today, a standalone message that we're calling Day One. It's a fresh start. And I, I don't want you to think of this as, um, honestly, I really don't want you just to think of it as, well, it's just a new year. It's a fresh new year. Think of it as day, tomorrow's going to be day one. Every day is a day when we get to start fresh. We get, to, we get to honor God with our lives. So go ahead and pull those out. If you're tuning in online, welcome. Thank you so much for being here with us. The notes are right there for you as well. There's a, there's a passage of scripture in 2 Chronicles chapter, four, chapter 7, verse 14 that says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Those are three really good promises, right? Come on, aren't you glad God hears from heaven, that he heals us, that he forgives us? That's a promise of God. And I, I, I think it's a, a, a tragedy that many of us, we begin this process every new year, and somewhere along the way, we're human, y'all. I'm going to tell you, I'm just going to be honest, we're going to mess it up this year. It's going to be something that happens. Everybody goes, well, I just hope this year is so much better than last year. I hope I don't have to go through the same stuff. Man, I hope it doesn't, it's not hard like it was last year. Can I tell you? I'm going to encourage you today. It's going to be. It's going to be. There's going to be a curveball this year that you didn't see coming. There's going to be something happen that you didn't know was going to happen. And if we're not careful, we'll find ourselves going, God, what the heck? But Jesus told us early, he said, I told you this that you would, so that you wouldn't lose hope. In this world, you will have trouble. But take heart, I've overcome the world. He's overcome it all. The key to, the key to overcoming is trusting in him, holding on to him, staying grafted into him. And he said, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek 
my face. It's one of the reasons I love starting off a new year with prayer and fasting. I love kicking it off going, hey, we're just going to push back the the culture, push back the world a little bit, and we're going to dive in to God. There's a passage of scripture in Matthew chapter 6 that, uh, that I want to read with you that Jesus reminds us of the value, the power of prayer and fasting. He said this, he said, when you pray, hey, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corner and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. He said hypocrites, he really meant the religious people of the day, people who love to flaunt it, who love to go, yeah, I'm a, I'm a believer, yeah, I, they wanted to, it, it was more about what they projected than what they were, okay? And he said, don't be like them. He said, I tell you the truth, that is all of the reward they'll ever get. But when you pray, go away to yourself, shut the door behind you, pray to your father in private. Then your father, who sees everything, will reward you. There's a, there's a pattern. Jesus said the whole world doesn't have to see your moments with God. Nothing wrong with Instagram and your Bible and prayer time sometimes, right? But if that's what you did, if that's the moment, right? How many of you, come on, I know some of us are guilty. We had that moment where we Instagrammed it, we posted it, and we closed the Bible and went on with our day. Like, you really didn't do it, you know what I'm saying? Like, he's saying, don't do that. It's not about what, who cares what people think? Get alone with God when you pray. God who sees it in private will reward you. And then he goes on, he goes on talking about it. So when you pray, do this, and when you fast... Don't make it obvious, as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable, disheveled, so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that's the only reward they will ever get. You know what, can I tell you the popular way to do that? Back in the day, they put sackcloth and ashes, right? They would walk around miserable. The, the modern day version of that is everybody posting this awesome picture on their Instagram going, I'm going to be out for the next 21 days. <laughs> Right? That's the modern sackcloth and ashes, right? Like, everybody know I'm fasting for the next 21 days. But when you fast, what does he say? Like, you ought to look better. Comb your hair. Wash your face. I hope you do that every day. But then no one will notice that you're fasting except your father, who knows what you do in private. You want to under- underline that word, private. Or, or write it down, private. He, he said that both times. In prayer... And in fasting. And your father who sees everything will what? Reward you. So he stated when you pray and when you fast. It was expected for the disciples to do these things. It was an expectation that followers of Jesus would fall in line with his habits. With the things that he did. The life that he lived. It was a formula for living your life on purpose. There really was something. Disciples often would go, Jesus, teach us how you do these things. And he would often go, well, this is how you do it. There's a different way. It looks different than the way the world does it. You see, you want to write this down. Prayer connects us to God. Well, what does fasting do? It disconnects us from the world. There's a reason why we do both. Because prayer is, is, is building our intimacy with the Father. And when we fast, when we push back the table, and when we push back the world, and when we say no to culture for a season, it disconnects us from the world. It allows us to hear the whispers of God just a little bit more. It allows us to turn down the volume of the world and turn up the volume of God. That's prayer and fasting. So today I want to share with you three things, I think, uh, some things that can help us in this season. I really do believe, I really do believe that moments and seasons of prayer and fasting, they do elevate our walk with the Father. They elevate our relationship with the Lord. Maybe you're here today and you, maybe you remember a moment, a time where you said yes to God, you wanted to follow Jesus, but come on, over time, that's kind of, it kind of weans itself, doesn't it? Over time, that, 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 that moment, that, that feeling that you get is, uh, after following Jesus, a newborn believer, it just kind of, it's like anything, without intentionality, it just kind of grows distant. And these are moments that allow us consistently, when it becomes a spiritual discipline in our life, when it becomes something that we do, the rhythm 
rhythm of life that, life that we live, when it becomes that, we find ourselves ebbing and flowing in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in a relationship with God the Father and the Holy Spirit, and it makes a difference. It allows us to have these moments where God can speak clear and with clarity into our lives. So I'm going to pray, and I'm going to share, share with you three things, I think, some, just a starting point for this prayer and fasting season, all right? Father, we love you. Man, we're just so grateful for your word today. We're grateful for the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Father, thank you for the work you did on the cross. God, as we walk out of this Christmas season, as we enter into, God, this season leading up into Easter. Oh, God, that we wouldn't forget that Jesus, while we were still sinners, you came. You came to earth. You lived a life perfect, sinless. You sacrificed it on our behalf. So, God, as we walk into this new season, this new year, God, I pray that you prepare our hearts, prepare our minds, God, for our walk with you. God, that it wouldn't just be the same. We wouldn't walk out of here the same as we walked in. But, Father, you would get all the honor and all the glory out of our lives. In Jesus' name, come on, we all said it? Amen. Number one, number one, you need to start here. You need to know why. Know why. You need to know why you do everything. My, my son, Shepard, he's six, and uh, that's his favorite question on earth. Hey, Shep, I need you to do something. Why? And I'm working with Shepard. Hey, son. Hey, there's a time and a place. You can always ask why, but first I need to hear yes, sir. (laughs) Right? Like you can always, I'll give you a good answer, but it don't need to be. Like you need to learn, like when's the proper time to ask why. You need to know your why. The Bible says it this way in Matthew chapter 17. There's a passage of scripture there where the disciples had been sent out to share the gospel. They had been sent out to share the word of God. Cast out demons, heal the sick. He had given them authority. He had given them power to do these things. And they come across a circumstance and a situation where for whatever reason, in this moment, they could not do it. It's kind of embarrassing because they'd been given all this authority and they have to call Jesus up and Jesus comes and he sees the whole thing and he makes it happen and he cast out this demon and he like, like he did it, they couldn't. And that was this moment. And the Bible says when they got along with Jesus, they asked him, hey man, what happened? You gave us authority. You sent us out. You told us to do these things. Why couldn't we and you could? And he said something so profound. He said, however, this kind does not go out. He's talking about casting demons. This doesn't happen except by prayer and fasting. It doesn't happen. This doesn't happen. There are things in your life that will not happen. There are breakthroughs in your life. Listen to this. That will not happen without a commitment to prayer and fasting. Connecting to God and disconnecting from the world. You can't have both. We can't be, we can't be equally connected to culture and to God on the same level. There's never a way that that will work out long term. Jesus said this can really only happen through prayer and fasting. You need healing, you need wisdom, you have a need in your life. There are things that will only happen with a proper motive. Everybody say this. Everybody say, motive matters. You want to write that down. Your motive matters. Why am I fasting? Why am I doing this? Why am I going to connect to God and disconnect from the world? What's the why behind doing it all anyways? There's a passage of scripture I want to read to you. It's not in your notes. It won't be on the screen. It's just extra. And I really believe the Lord just kind of laid it on my heart as I was prepping uh, this morning and praying, uh, finalizing this uh, in my heart. It's in Isaiah chapter 58. You want to write that reference down because it talks about the motives of people. It talks about the motives of the why. And it says, he talks about his people and he says, they act like a righteous nation. They would never abandon the laws of God. They asked me to take action on their behalf, pretending they want to be near me. We fasted before you. They say, why aren't you impressed? Come on, anybody been there? God, I did this for 21 days. What the heck? We've been very hard on ourselves, and you don't even notice it. He said, I'll tell you why. Anytime God respond, uh, answers with that, you need to like cover up. <laughs> <laughs> right? I'm going to tell you why. Um, it's because you're fasting to please yourselves. Mm. It's because your motives are wrong. It's because you're not, the why is wrong. Even while you fast, you keep oppressing your workers. 
What good is fasting when you keep on fighting and quarreling? This kind of fasting will never get you anywhere with me. Come on, those are hard words, right? You humble yourselves by going through the motions of penance, bowing your heads like reeds bending in the wind. You dress in burlap and cover yourselves with ashes. In this, what is this what you call fasting? Do you really think this is what pleases the Lord? And then he calls out their motives. He said, no, 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 this is the fasting that I want. Free those who are only imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry. Give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them. Do not hide from your relatives who need your help. Then he goes on. Then do this. Then the salvation will come like the dawn. Your wounds will quickly heal. The godly, your godliness will lead you forward. And the glory of the Lord will protect you from all sides. You go, I'm praying, I'm fasting. God, I need you. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. We can walk into this season of prayer and fasting. And if we don't have our why correct, all you're going to be is hungry. All you're going to be is bored. All you're going to be is disconnected from social media. It's not going to do a thing if your why is not right, if your motive isn't correct. He said, stop fasting only for yourselves. Oh, that we would get a heart that says, God, make us like you. I'm disconnecting from the world, not because I want you to see it and bless me more. God, I'm disconnecting from the world because I need you more. The Bible says, like the deer pants for the water, I desire. I, my soul longs for you. God, I need you more than I need my next meal. I need you more than I need whatever it is I'm pushing back this next season. What's your why? Our why here at Cultivated legitimately, I want it to always fall in line right here with uh, Isaiah 58. Let the oppressed go free. Feed the homeless. Feed the hungry. Help the needy. Be the hands and feet of Jesus in any possible way. God, use us to make a difference in the world. Last year, we saw 208 people give their heart to Jesus. Y'all, last year was just last week, right? Like, like we're seeing people. There's never a week that goes by that somebody doesn't walk through a door to campus somewhere and find hope in Jesus. That's our why. God, not that, not that you would do anything for me selfishly, but God, help my motives. Now, let's be honest. Let's be honest. Some of us, we hear that and we go, okay, well, God, I need you to help change my motive. I don't know. How, how do you change your motive when that is your motive? Anybody been there? Right? Well, God, I don't want that to be my motive, but for whatever reason it is, there it is. God sees the change in heart. I don't want it to be, so God shift it to something else. And little by little, I promise you, over the next 21 days, when you have that posture before the Lord, he'll start changing your why. He'll start un- you'll start understanding. You'll start, viewing, you'll start viewing your neighborhood through a different lens. You'll walk out. You'll see your neighbors different than you've ever seen them before. You'll see your friends at work and, uh, and at school. You'll see them different than you've ever seen before when you begin to change your why? It's not about me, God. It's all about you. Now, we've given. We give here to church a minimum of 10%. We give out to the, to the world around us. Y'all, we've planted churches. We've planted over 60 churches this past year. We've baptized a bunch of kids in Mexico. We're opening a brand new location this next year. Why? Because our motive is not about us. It's not about these seats. It's about who's not in these seats. A whole lot of people need to know Jesus. So, Father, make us more like you. So that the world around us can see you through us. What's your, what's your why? You need to know that. We need to shift. We need to understand what that is. Number two, you need to know what. Okay, once I know why, I got my motive. God, I'm not, I'm not doing this selfishly. I'm not doing this just so I think you could do something for me. Now what? Daniel chapter 10 verse 3 says this. At uh, all that time I had eaten no rich food. This is Daniel talking. No meat or wine crossed my lips. I used no fragrant lotions until these three weeks had passed. That's a famous uh, fast that many people do every year. Maybe you're planning to do that. It's called the Daniel Fast. It's uh, no, no protein, no meats, no, all vegetables, right? I remember when we first started fasting, my wife and I, we started this Daniel Fast. And man, you can get so legalistic. You know what I'm saying? It's like, like you know, we should, we'd be like, well, corn chips count, right? That's... that's <laughs> Like, that's got to count, right? That's a vegetable, right? Huh? We ate so much chips and salsa, you know? 
<laughs> oh, man, you get, uh, you know, you need, like, ketchup counts. That's a vegetable, right? Like, we're going to mix that in. Like, you know, you learn to, like, you, you find yourself, like, we would find ourselves cutting every corner that we, would, that we could cut because we just couldn't hack it. You know what I'm saying? And it's the what? What, what am? Can I tell you some, some advice? Can I give you some advice? Ready? Ready? It needs to cost you something. Whatever it is. I'm not saying you got to, like, you got to, whatever it is, you do that between, remember what Jesus said, hey, don't do what the world, don't let all the world see what you're doing, do it in private, find a moment with God, ask God, what are you asking me to push back, what are you asking me to do, do without uh, with these next 21 days, it, it, it should cost you something, meaning this, I, I'm pretty honest, like, there may be one or two people in here that, like, you, you, some of y'all are like, I'm just going to fast broccoli. Like, oh, come on. Come on. I'm just going to eat steak all month long. <laughs> sacrificing for Jesus. Right? Like, come on. It should cost you something. It should be something of value to you. It should be something of value. It should be challenging. It ought to be difficult. It ought to be something that when you, out of habit, go to it, it's a reminder that, that God's more valuable than that thing. It ought to be challenging. It ought to be something that is difficult to let go of over the next 21 days. It should be a reminder out of habit that God, hey, oh, 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 man, I forgot a fact. I'm going to reach for God in this moment instead of reaching for that thing. Maybe, maybe it's you. Maybe every day you're in a bad habit of when you wake up, you flip up that phone and you, all that FOMO you had while you're sleeping, you're trying to catch up with everybody's. Like maybe you ought to push Instagram back. Facebook back. Maybe social media is something you do legitimately need to fast. Maybe it's too valuable to you. Some of y'all probably ought to step up your game this year. Maybe you ought to push back some food. Maybe you ought to fast lunch. Or maybe you ought to fast during the, hour, during the daylight hours. That's a Jewish fast, a traditional fast. They would fast from daylight to, dawn, uh, to dark, and then they would eat a meal together. Whatever it is you're choosing, I would say it needs to cost you something. Social activities, how much time you're going to devote to prayer and the Word. You need to know that. What am I going to do? Have a plan. Write that down. Have a plan. Whatever it is, you just need to have a plan. And it needs to be consistent. It needs to cost you something. It needs to be valuable. It ought to be challenging. It ought to be something that reminds you every day when you wake up over the next 21 days, I'm giving this up for something more valuable. I'm giving up something good for something better. That's what it is. What's your what? What's your what? And then the third one, number three, I'll tell you, you need to know how. How am I going to do it? Why am I going to do it? What am I actually going to do? You need to have a plan. If you're just going into this thing unprepared, I'm telling you, you're going to fail miserably. It just is what it is. It's not going to work. And you need to know how. I love this. Romans 8 and 5. He says, those who are dominated by the sinful nature think about sinful things. But those who are controlled by the Holy Spirit think about things that please the Spirit. Isn't that good? Why? How am I going to do this? Can I tell you something? It's going to be hard. Maybe some of y'all hadn't, had, hadn't, hadn't gone 20 years without caffeine in your body, you know, or something. Like, you're going to, I'm going to push back. Like, those first three days when you have, like, crazy headaches and cravings and, you know, when, when, you're, when you just withdraw from, like, social media and you're just, like, feeling like there's a monster inside. Like, what in the world? You know what I mean? Like, when you're, when you're struggling, that inner battle. How am I going to do this? Through the power of the Holy Spirit. It's Him. Can I tell you, it is much, there is so much more that God wants for you, that He wants for me. Jesus said it, that can only be found through prayer and fasting. Can only be found in moments where I push back the world. And I say, God, just speak. How am I going to do it? You need to prepare spiritually, number one. You need to write that down. I need to prepare spiritually. Here's what I want to encourage you to do. Maybe over the next few moments, we're about to pray here in a few moments, and maybe this is your moment. Maybe you'll take time with your family. Take time with your spouse. Take time with your kids this evening, at, uh, this week at some point. And you prepare yourself spiritually. Can I tell you one of the coolest things you could probably do this week? 
One of the coolest things is you could probably gather your family in the living room and gather your kids or gather your spouse or maybe it's somebody in your life, somebody significant. It's like together, you just gather together and you, you pray together, you repent together. Hey, parents, can I tell you one of the greatest things you can do to help your children grow in their faith? Let them see you repent in front of God. Let them see that. Hey, Father, we love you. Hey, we don't always get it right. God, help us. God, we repent of the times we've, we've gotten it wrong in our family this year. The times, the moments when I overreacted. The times, the moments when I sh- did something I shouldn't have. Let them see what true repentance looks like. Do that as a family. Do that with your spouse. Find time to prepare yourself spiritually this week. And then you need to prepare yourself physically. Like, you, just, you need to do that. Like, can I tell you one of the... Uh, 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 one of the worst things that happen is it's tr- it, it happens traditionally all the time. Like com- it's coming, right? Um, Lent is coming, and it is famous, right? What happens the day before Lent begins? Anybody know? Fat Tuesday, baby. Let's get it all out, right? Like get all your debauchery out today. Tomorrow we fast. <laughs> we repent tomorrow. Come on, y'all. That's great. Like, like. Like, prepare yourself physically. Like, if you're going to fast some food, don't eat the buffet Saturday before Sunday. I'm not going to be able to eat this for the next 30 days, 21 days. You know what I mean? Like, I can't, I'm not going to be on social media for the next 21 days. And you go back like five years on somebody's Instagram and accidentally like something, you weirdo. Uh, Like, like, oh God, it's six years ago. How are they going to know it? Like, prepare yourself physically. What does it look like, right, to have a plan? Don't just go into it. You got seven days, y'all. Don't just go into it and go, I'm just going just gonna to leave it up to the Lord. No, prepare. Prepare your heart. Prepare your body. Hey, when we first, I, I first started fasting, I, if you know me, some of my, my closest friends are small group. Y'all know me. I'm, I'm like all or nothing. Um, and the very first time I ever was like, I'm going to fast, I'm like, water only, 40 days. <laughs> I was so stupid. <laughs> That was so dumb. Uh, I lasted like, you know, like, I don't know. I probably lasted like, tw- like hours. <laughs> minutes. Minutes. You know, uh, you just actually, you know, like, no calories at all. No, that's not. Like, don't do, like, be reasonable, y'all. Like, be reasonable. You never fasted food before? Start with a meal. Start with a meal. Can I tell you something really, really honest? The what matters. It really does matter. It should cost you something. It should be valuable. All those things. But it matters so much less than what you really think. The why matters most. Can I tell you that? Your why matters most. God wants your heart more than he wants your anything. That's why he said it in the Old Testament. He said, I don't desire your, I don't desire your, your sacrifice is disgusting to me. I don't desire your sacrifice. He said, I want your obedience. Obedience is far greater than sacrifice. So your why matters. Your what does matter, like it does, but not as much as your why. So when you're trying to figure out this how, don't, don't get to this point where you go, I'm going all in. I remember when I was uh, 15 years old, I had just given my heart to the Lord just a couple of years prior. I was really, I was doing my very best to honor God with my life. And I remember driving down the road one day, and I, just, I was like praying, I'm having this time with God, and this moment came over me, and I don't know why, but I was like this... I, I, it was so stupid. I was like, I'm never listening to secular music again. And I, I like Eric Clapton. Got any Eric Clapton fans in here? Come on, somebody. Yep. Uh, I, I had like every album, had every, every CD, every, threw it all out the window. <laughs> Driving down the road. Whew. My man, I'm in. Me and you, Jesus. And like three days later, I was like, what the heck did I do? <laughs> Trying to find them all down the side of the road, you know? Like, Come on, y'all. Let's, let's, be, let's not be super spiritual here. Let's be just spiritual, right? Let's not go overboard. Let's let God do the work in us. Like, you don't do yourself, like, you're not going to do yourself any favor trying to get ahead of God in your life. You start now, say, God, here's my why. I'm giving you my heart. I'm going to push back reasonably something this year, and it's going to be valuable. It's going to cost me something. I'm giving you my life, but God, I'm going to let you. Little by little, precept upon precept. The Bible says this. Don't, God does, don't despise small beginnings. God rejoices to see the work begin. 
This year, you want to go deeper in the word. You want to learn more about uh, God than you ever have before. Okay, do that. Dig in. Let God begin to teach you. Start somewhere, a Bible reading plan. Get, on, get in a group with people in a small group. Start incrementally growing in your faith. And I promise you, this next 21 days, you'll see God do more in you and through you than you ever dreamed possible. Hey, I want to pray. Will you bow your heads and close your eyes? It's not band's going to come. They're going to play some music. I promise you nothing funny or weird. I promise. I'm just going to pray with you. It's your moment. It's a holy moment between you and God. You're here in this moment, and you go, man, I need to know my why. God, I need to know my why. Why am I doing this? Am I just doing this because, man, pastor said, let's do it? Okay, well, I mean, dive in, do it. God will give you a better why. As you dig in, as you try, he'll give you a better why. How am I going to do this? What am I going to do? I'm going to encourage you. If you'll, if, you'll, if you'll spend these next couple of days, get along with God. Find some moments to be with him. Get with your family and talk about it. Actually converse. Have a conversation amongst your family. I promise you, God will speak. He'll speak to your heart. He'll give you a word. He'll give you an idea. He'll give you a thought. You'll begin to take little bitty, little steps in your faith journey. You'll wake up one day and you'll be strong in your faith. Disciples didn't get like Jesus from day one. They didn't, they, they, weren't, they weren't healing the sick and healing the blind day one. They followed Jesus. Eventually, you hear Paul later on go, follow me as I follow Christ. Eventually, you see Peter, who failed miserably at his first try publicly, like denying Jesus. Eventually, you see him stand up and boldly proclaim the gospel and thousands of people come to faith. You don't get there overnight, but I promise we'll get there together. We'll get there. God will do more in you than you ever dreamed possible. So, God, what's my why? Maybe it begins with a brand new relationship with Jesus. Maybe the best decision you've made in your life to begin a brand fresh new, a brand new year fresh is saying, Jesus, forgive me of my sin. I've been doing this in my own strength and my own emotions. I've been doing it far too long in my own abilities. I'm so sorry. Forgive me. Help me walk in repentance. God, where there's, where there's a lack of faith, help my unbelief. Today, I'm committing to put you Lord of my life. Jesus, I accept you as Savior. And from this day forward, I'm going to live my life on purpose in a way that honors you. God, I love you. God, I thank you for my church family. God, I pray that through the power of the Holy Spirit, this is the greatest season of prayer and fasting Cultivate Church has ever seen. God, we're going to check our motives. We're going to check our hearts. And we're going to see you bring revival to Shelby County. God, I pray that in the name of Jesus, that you would get all the honor out of our lives. Amen. Come on, church. Can we honor him today? Come on, he's worthy.